Ah, uh, Constantine, the last in a series of very weird releases that we have over here on the NA version of the game. But unlike, say, the Trunk Sisters, who do have some steep competition against, say, the Dio Scurry twins or even a free-to-play like Hokusai Saber, and then you have Super Bunyan, who's, you know, not all that great, but they're not kind of bad, they're just kind of average. Constantine has a pretty interesting niche. If you do decide to go for him, or maybe just bring him as a friend, he can help you out, kind of. I know that one of the gameplays here is not exactly going to show that off the best. It'll show off kind of his survivability, but I just thought it was really funny that they all got blasted and then MHXX had to come in. It's just really unfortunate, though, that he's kind of one of these Miss Crane or Tamamo type supports that you would probably find a place to use them in, but they're another five star support. You know, it's a reason why Zhu Fu for the anniversary is such a nice addition to the servant pool because they are a three star support. They cost pretty much nothing, so you can easily slot them into a team. Whereas people like, say, doing a crane setup or a Constantine setup, that does require you to kind of take an L on your team building a little bit. You know, you got to sacrifice, say, a five star CE, which can definitely be very strong, whether you're giving up a K scope, a 2030, a Prisma Cosmos on whatever support you're using. And it's kind of generally not worth it. But if you do decide to use him, he can be nice. Although, again, you're probably just going to bring a Koyanskaya, a Merlin, or whatever have you but i'm gonna break them down in this video today I and mean, if you would like being informed on all things going on on both the na and jp versions of the game make sure you drop a like and you subscribe to the channel also if you want to see your boy go through fgo i stream it every monday wednesday and friday starting at 6 p.m eastern standard time so if you're interested in that click that link down in the description down below so let's start getting right into constantine's kit starting off with his hits which He's got a very good one. I like that as a support, he is rocking the double buster, double arts, because that will help him with a lot of your support casters. You know, your Castorias, your Merlins, your Tamamos, whoever you want to bring. Most of them are rocking a triple arts deck. Him having his own two arts cards will make it kind of convenient for whoever your main DPS is to kind of gain access to some of those arts cards, unless it's a melt type servant that is rocking the Lancer deck of double quick, double buster, but at that point, I don't know why you'd be bringing Constantine. You could also just use him in the spot of your DPS if you want to make your team a bit bulkier because of how his kit works. So I guess that's also nice if you're going to, say, do a Merlin Castoria type setup or you're doing, say, like a Merlin Tamamo or Castoria Proto Merlin for whatever reason, you know, it just works pretty nice. It's just very convenient to have for most of your team comps. Although, aside from that, his hits aren't super impressive. I mean, they're not bad. You know, four on the quick, four on the arts, and then five on the extra attack, which, you know, we like to see as the extra attack is a composite card that gen stars NP and does big boy damage. But with an NP gain value of only 0.52, he's not going to be refunding all that much NP. He has stuff in his kit to help him out with that. And again, if you're bringing him as an extra support to kind of face tank through bosses and you're going to stall your way through, you should be fine with those extra supports. Although the one thing to kind of keep in mind is that he is a rider, so his natural star weight is going to step on the toes of any DPS servants that you do bring. So make sure if you're going to bring whatever DPS that they have a decent star weight. Because you already got to fight your casters for the stars, but riders is definitely a problem because they just love glorbing up all the stars that your DPS wants. But let's start moving into his skills, starting off with skill one. This one is not all that bad, giving him 50% NP gain for one turn, giving him a taunt, and then bombing 20 stars on a six turn cooldown. Now, I do understand that if they made, say, the taunt three turns or the NP gain three turns, this would definitely be a lot better, but you kind of just use it whenever you want to burst up some of his NP. Maybe you're in need of getting to said NP in the next turn or so. You could pop this, he'll take a bunch of hits with that massive NP gain. If you've hopefully also found some of his arts cards, he should be able to get back up to firing his NP again. And the stars are definitely very helpful for that. Like I mentioned earlier, he is a rider. So again, if you do find your arts cards with this skill active when you bomb those stars, he's probably going to absorb those for himself because again, natural star weight is ridiculous. And so you can kind of treat this as a baby version of, say, Saber Masashi's double hit skill. 
in the way that you fire it when you have the arts cards to kind of refund the NP, treat it somewhat like that. Obviously, I think Masashi skill is just a bit easier to use, but if you want to look at it like that or just provide stars for your DPS to do some crits, I think that's fine as well. If they're going to buff this in the future, I would either like to see that NP gain be three turns just flat out, or maybe it's 50% NP gain for the entire party. I think that could actually be really interesting. Moving on to his second skill, this is kind of a nice little buff for the entire party, giving them 20% attack, 20% buster, and if you're Roman, you get 30% crit damage. So if you want to use Roma with this guy, he'll absolutely love it, or break out your Nero, although Nero is an art servant, so I don't know how much he's actually going to like that. I guess bring your summer Nero instead. Bring your caster one. She'll like it. You'll kind of notice that Constantine somewhat functions a little bit like Himiko in the way that they're defensive servants, but they also have a way to do some pretty decent crit damage. In Himiko's case, I think she does it a lot better, but they're aiming to just be kind of bulky, but then kind of raise everybody up to being able to do some pretty decent crits, and that's how you're going to slowly overcome the opponents. The only L is that, again, you do have to be Roman to get that crit damage, which is a bit unfortunate, but if you want, you can always bring Romulus and turn everybody into Romans with his NP, so that could be kind of fun, I suppose. But aside from that, it is a fairly solid buff if you're still just getting the attack and the buster buff. Finally, there's his third skill, which is kind of interesting. So I actually went through and looked at some of his descriptions for his lore. Don't worry, there's no spoilers for trauma if you're interested in that sort of thing. But this is kind of interesting because it functions as an imperial privilege skill or more of a baby version of that. See, he can't quite abuse it like, say, Nero or Romulus actually can but he can actually donate some of these buffs to his allies on the battlefield, but it also takes a little bit out of him to use. So I think it's interesting that he gives himself a 30% battery, a 30% crit damage buff, and then gives himself 10 stars every single turn. And then when he's defeated, he passes that on to the last party member in your setup, which I think is kind of cool because it's on a six turn cooldown and you can effectively have this effect up for all six turns just not for himself now the only thing that i think is a little bit weird is that he has the taunt and he does want to go down even his bond ce wants him to go down as his bond ce gives the entire party 20 percent attack and a 5k heal obviously beside himself because he's going down and that's kind of nice it gives you an additional little buff because even if the entire party's not getting the np or the crit damage you know they're all going to benefit from those stars I think if they wanted to make this a little bit better, they could just have this be for the entire party, kind of like a Visa Braun. When he goes down, he donates some buffs or think of George's Bond CE where he gives everybody the invincibility. Stuff like that is kind of nice. Or you can at least make it targetable. You know, whoever he targets when he goes down while the skill is active, that person will receive the buffs. You know, I think that is a very good way that you could maybe mitigate some of the weird planning for some of your servants you know if somebody goes down and you're like oh man i wanted uh, that guy to come in to get these buffs and it's a little bit weird maybe a little bit finicky you could just be like all right target that guy and make sure that he gets all of those buffs which could be kind of funny because if you have a guts on him or a gut ce you could technically target yourself get the guts refund the np and i think that could be very interesting but it is a fairly decent skill. I like the idea of it. Unfortunately, similar to, say, Super Bunyan, I think the kit just feels a little bit dated. I had the take that when I was looking at Super Bunyan's kit that she feels kind of like a late year three, year four-ish type servant. Her kit just feels kind of basic. It's not bad, but it's missing additional effects or it's missing some of that oomph that a lot of modern servants are going to have you know think of and i know they're the summer units but think of all the effects that the summer units are packing on their skills and think of all the things that you know they jammed onto archetype earth or even Zhu fu who comes out on that same banner you know she's chopped full of different effects and she's just a three star I mean, even the upcoming units are chock full of a whole bunch of different effects, especially Charlemagne, who's going to be getting more in two years. And so it just feels like they're lacking a little bit, like they went a little too soft on some of these buffs. And again, I have the you know conspiracy theory that maybe these servants were supposed to come out earlier. Maybe they were intended to release at an earlier date, but 
they got pushed back or something as we do know from some of the interviews that they have stuff planned they like to plan in advance but then like oh hold on we're gonna do a collab right there so uh, just push that back and then maybe they just reorganized everything my conspiracy theory because some of these servants just feel like they weren't supposed to release with some of the other servants we got this year although his np is actually really good i do like this np i think it's a huge miss that he does not increase the entire party's buster by 30 to 50 percent for three turns but it still allows him to do some decent crits because he has that 20 percent buff plus the 30 percent crit damage buff plus the other 30 percent on the third skill plus the attack buff so he can do decent crits again not these crazy Himiko crits, especially because Himiko is like overcharging the NPs and everything, so stuff can get really ridiculous. But he sacrifices that for more survivability. So he gives himself one invincibility for one attack for one turn. So kind of one guaranteed hit, but even if that gets used, he still gives everybody 100% defense for the entire turn. And if you remember from Galatea, getting a 100% defense does mitigate any damage. You take zero damage from any attack this turn, as long as they don't have like buff removal or pierce defense. It also has the effect to reduce the damage taken of Roman allies by 5,000 for one turn, which I also looked into because I was like, I get that he's the last, you know, Byzantine emperor, which is like Eastern Rome, but why is like, you know, what's up with the damage cut thing? And apparently, he can use his NP to protect a whole bunch of people, but it's more effective when he's doing it against people that are from his time period and his era. So I guess that's why the Romans get the extra damage cut. Although I kind of wish that that lasted for maybe three hits for three turns. You know what I mean? Because you're already covered with the defense, but I guess maybe if they have Pierce defense, you still have that big damage cut to hopefully, you know, give you some extra survivability, let you live the hit. But I don't know if you just talk on that extra you know three turns for three or three hits for three turns my bad it's already restricted to roman guys anyway and sure you can make everybody roman again with uh, people like romulus you know you could always do that but it's already kind of a small amount of servants that you're able to use just make it a little bit better you know give us a good reward for going out of our way to use these roman servants so overall it's kind of a really weird way to rank this guy i mean Again, like kind of in a similar vein to someone like Super Bunyan, I think he could like easily sit as like a B tier servant, you know, relatively inoffensive. You're probably not going to use him very much, but he's definitely not bad. But I definitely don't see him as being really cracked or crazy, especially because every time I would test him out over on JP, it just felt like I should just bring somebody else. You know, it's just the fact that you've got you Merlins, you know, you have Chen Gong even as like a really low rarity support technically still gives you the buster buff and the extra buff if you're a berserker right but you have low rarity options you could also bring koyan's guy you could bring oberon you just have other guys to bring that constantine might fall in some kind of weird niche scenario where if you're playing a super defense build because for whatever reason you just gotta not take damage they have pierce invul and you just gotta face tank everything i guess for some niche interactions he could be really good but there's just no reason to really summon for him in my opinion but let me know what you think in the comments down below and make sure you have a good rest of your day but with that being said i'll catch you guys on the flip side